discussing a, a very current topic, which is what is the central station doing to maintain its operations? What should it be doing to maintain its operations so that it can continue to provide services to its alarm dealers? Uh, I woke up this morning wondering if I was going to have electric and running water, never mind whether my alarm still worked. Uh, but I, I watched The Walking Dead probably more than uh, the rest of you do. So, so th the concern that everybody has is, is, is known to all of you. And let me tell you some of the call, one of the calls I, I, I got, because I'm in New York, and I don't know about other states, but New York, the governor, non-essential businesses have to close. So the first question that we got from our clients, are we alarm companies essential? So I, you know, there's no definition for it. Who knows? So I said, yes, you're essential. But not everyone who works for you might be essential. So you, you might be able to, to uh, reduce your, your workforce that way. And maybe you should. Um, uh, Central stations have clustered type of, of uh, uh, environment where operators all sit within close proximity to each other. That's not uh, the case. In, for example, in my office, almost everybody has their own office, and if they don't have their own office, they have they have their own cubicle. So so we're really separated. So so I've I've tried to keep my people here. Um, at any rate. Why don't we, this is going to be a discussion and hopefully uh, I don't have to uh, uh, referee. You guys will, will uh, uh, of course this format might make it more difficult to, to get things going, okay? So what, why don't I start off with Justin, uh, who's from Avant Guard, and ask him what steps should central stations take and what steps is Avant Guard taking to continue its operations and make sure that its dealers are, are properly supported? Great, great question, Ken. And, um, I'm not sure I'm one to say what everybody should be doing, but I'm happy to talk about what we're doing um, in our monitoring centers. About a month ago, as we watched the virus spread through China, we started talking about what would we do in a scenario when it came here. Um, and so we started working on things. We had a lot in place as well with some of the technology that we've employed in the last years. And uh, as of today, we have at most, we've actually sent our workforce out to work from home. And so we've ordered hundreds of laptops, hundreds of headsets, and we are monitoring from home. Um, over the last few weeks, we've been sanitizing and keeping doors open in the monitoring centers. But as we continue to watch the spread, we recognize that there is no way to keep everyone safe in a monitoring center environment because you can't control where they're going when they're outside that environment and it spreads through the air and you can't sanitize the air. And so our efforts have really been to provide a secure and a safe environment for our operators to work in. Uh, I saw a video this morning of our monitoring center, our redundant center in Rexburg, Idaho. I have seven operators there. Right now I'd usually have about 40 and uh, we continue to push that out and by mid next week i expect that my monitoring centers will be empty and it will be entirely a work from home scenario we're fortunate uh, here in the center of the country to not have uh, we're a little behind the spread that many of you are experiencing in the coast that buys us a few extra days i think but uh, we recognize that if we have one case of COVID in our monitoring center that would change our business and for us, it's been most important to continue to monitor accounts for all of our subscribers. And the way we feel we can do that is by dispersing our workforce and utilizing the infrastructure that we have in place to do that. Who, who other, what other central stations have sent your operators home to work from home? Any, any of you? Uh, Bart? Yeah, this is, this is Daniel, um, oh, Daniel, Daniel at Affiliated Monitoring. Uh, Daniel, have, um, we, have, have, we, have you sent your, some of your operators home? The vast majority of our operators are home. We have a couple of okay. specific functions, um, but I would say 80%, and, and just like Justin, our expectation is to be completely virtual. I, I don't, I, I wouldn't say completely. I think um, we're never closing either our Houston, Texas monitoring center or our New Jersey monitoring center, which are you know re 
redundant. Um, we'll always have them staffed, but extraordinarily minimally. Um, the, you know, the prudent decisions that uh, Justin and, and Avant Garde made were the same, the same ones that we did. We identified the need um, for remote monitoring, made these you know, made extraordinary investments in in laptops and and the technology, and actually second screens. We have a very significant um, PERS um, contingent you know, of, of accounts, um, PERS accounts, and so we have um, to be able to do that. We were able to give our um, at home operators second screens to allow them to be able to do um, PERS monitoring and especially location aware monitoring. Okay, let me let me ask you this. Uh, uh... I guess I'll ask. Uh, let me ask uh, Morgan. Morgan, did Rapid also send its people home? We have uh, sent all non-monitoring people home. So um, all the all right, administration but you're not is do, home. You're not, but wait, you're not doing remote monitoring then, right? From home. We do not. We have not had had the necessity to send any dispatchers home. Instead, what we did was, you know, we occupy about seventy-five thousand square feet. So what we did was we sent all the uh, non-essential people home and then spaced out the rest of it and are prepared to send people home when necessary. Okay, but with, here's the question I need answered. Bart, I'll give you a shot at this because I saw you raised your hand. You you sent some operators home to work from home? Yeah, okay. the, not, the, um, the uh, other than the operators, uh, but we've... Um, no, 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 wait. Uh, I want to know how an operator is going to monitor accounts from home and respond to signals. So who can tell me how that works? Well, that's well, that's simple. You know, the, we establish uh, VPNs from the uh, from the homes in accordance with the UL guidelines. UL came out with a set of uh, guidelines for us this week. Uh, they've been very um, very good about uh, working with the industry and. Uh, you know, we, we've sent people home with equipment. Uh, it's our equipment and uh, our phone systems that uh, I, I know Justin is on the same platform as us. Uh, they have soft phones or uh, we gave them phones off of desks that we didn't need. And uh, it's all recorded. It's it's all uh, as if they were sitting in the office. It's, uh, it, it's really uh, simple stuff. Uh, Daniel, is that how it works? That everything Bart said is 100% true, um, which isn't always the case, but in this case, it is 100% right, true. Right. <laughs> hey. I'm, I'm, only I'm allowed to, to pick on Bart. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, the, the reality is, uh, Ken, that, that every monitoring center on this call has the technology and ability to allow their monitoring agents to monitor from home. It's really been UL limitations, and, and there's you know prudent reasons so, you know, um, around HIPAA and, and other concerns, but from a technological standpoint, meaning, you know, putting aside business practices in the normal course, from a technological standpoint, I have confidence, you know, th it's, it's not difficult. The only, the only real challenge is that the agent needs to have a um, good broadband connection at home. So we had some challenges where not every agent does, but most, most do. Okay. Yeah, so you know, anyone Ken, else the, want to comment broad, on that? Well, the broad the broadband uh, requirement isn't really that wide. Um, you know, so uh, you know, for for us that are on the Stages platform, we don't load any specific uh, software on the uh, on the desktops or laptops. So uh, there isn't a lot of broadband it, it, uh, usage. And it's really very simple, and we don't have to have all kinds of uh, IT engineers involved in the process. I will I will comment though, Ken. You know, the uh, five of us that are here today, um, you know, have all made significant uh, investments. We all run multiple centers. You know, USA this year is in its 20th year of having a redundant office. So. Um, you know, it, it's it's really what you've you've amassed here today. The leaders in our industry in the uh, contract monitoring business, and uh, I only see um, one leader in our industry here. Yeah, what yourself? That's exactly yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, you, you watch watch the five of us, and you'll and and you'll see where this industry is going. 
Okay. Uh, I've got a question here. Curious about thoughts on UL's statement for UL 2050 standard and accounts. Uh, uh, they didn't finish the question because I guess there wasn't enough room about uh, US-based central station monitoring national industry security system accounts. Any deviation from UL? And then, then I lost the question. Anyone know what he's talking yeah, about? You, you, yeah, and yeah. while I'm not a 2050 center, and you know, I'm not sure Morgan or let's let let someone who is who's a 2050 uh, the statement the, the statement the statement was Morgan. Huh? Morgan? Go on, Morgan. Yeah, UL UL 2050 was was carved out of the work from home um, scenario. So if you're doing UL 2050. Your, uh, your operators need to be still sitting in the secure center. If you can't provide those services, then, then they will have to make other arrangements, either with full-time guards or get somebody else to monitor it. Correct. Uh, uh, this is Daniel. This is Daniel Oppenheim. The, the the reason that we have our monitoring center staffed is that we are also 2050, and so we have to keep a, some agents um, um, to be able to monitor those accounts. Okay. Someone wants to know how phones are being answered. I, I, I don't know whether they mean operators or they mean uh, 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 regular business phones. Who wants to try David, to David, you want to handle that? I feel like we haven't given you any airtime. You're <laughs> muted, sir. David, I think you're muted. All right. Nobody's yeah. who's yeah. muted. Nobody's yeah. no. He's going to stamp. I don't think anyone's muted. Justin, you want to handle that question? I'll, I'll take unless David gets unmuted here. So oh, for us, I problems. I apologize. So yeah, I, I think we touched on it uh, a little bit. It's called a soft phone. It's just a piece of software that resides on the computer that the operator uses. Uh, because we're connected through the VPN, uh, the, the calls are tunneled through the VPN to the soft phone on the uh, dispatcher's uh, computer. It's answered that way through the headset. Yeah, and, and to show you how uh, operations continue as as they were even on the soft phones the uh, audio recording at, at least on the platform that Justin and I are on uh, are still recorded by the recording equipment in the central station so uh, there, there's no there's no change in the uh, volume or quality of service that we deliver okay uh, they want to know if non-essentials are non-essential employees are being paid. Oh, well, he he left already, so we don't have to answer that. And that 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 would apply to any business, not just the alarm industry. What phone platform is that that you just mentioned? The Aonix by Tataran. Okay, so that question. We're on Avaya, same thing. Yeah, These we're soft phones. Yeah, we're on an Avaya switch as well. Yeah, affiliate is on Avaya as well. Well, let me, let me, most of the phones me. in our offices are IP anyway, so oh. so they're not like connected like old time telephones with with two wires. They're IP phones anyway. So whether the IP phone is sitting on their desk at work or the IP phone is tunneled through the VPN, uh, the switch doesn't doesn't really differentiate. Yeah, yeah we're we're all, we're all on IP uh, platforms. Right. So so if if we're gonna bring you know the craziness that's going on right now. Yeah. Uh, 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 to its uh, maybe illogical extension, where, where are we headed? Uh, uh, this is really week one for me in a way that, that my staff is for the first time uh, affected. Yeah. There's two Again, ways. this is. Wait, this let me is, just, if, let me if I, if David, let me just Daniel, let me just make make it a two part sure. question because um, one, we we all have to deal with our employees and ourselves for that matter. But but our but 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 so the human element of those that that work for us and operate our business, but but I'm now already seeing uh, a, a bit into the future. I think there's going to be problems with receivables that companies are going to experience, and that's yeah. going to put additional pressure, maybe different pressure than health-related questions. We need to. Uh, Ken, this is Daniel. I'll that? just start and give everyone a chance to answer. Right. I, I think that that what what is um, and and I don't want to speak on behalf of everyone on the call, but in some ways, you know, this isn't a call about us being competitors, but about the monitoring industry supporting all of these dealers all over the country that are 
um, I think going to face challenging times. You know, we, um, by definition, all the people on this call have been prepared for emergency monitoring and co business continuity. It is in the DNA of running a monitoring center. So. Being for, while, while I don't think pandemic was at the top of our list, the idea of being able to operate our businesses with, with, with any kind of challenge um, is part of planning and running. So um, we, are, we have all made investments and all have been thought about this in a way that I think the average business out there has not had to. So from, from that standpoint, we're prepared. Um, and I have confidence in all the people on this call to be able to consistently monitor the systems of their, the alarm partners and dealers that we have out there. Um, I think the challenges are going to be um, that our dealers are going to confront. Um, and so, you know, th this is really about um, affiliated and, 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 and my brethren on the call supporting these dealers as um, they continue to to, to offer service um, to their customers. Um, the, the, the one challenge is, you know, if I can speak frankly, is, um, you know, th there has been, you know, there'll be significant expense all of, by all of us and continued, um, continued to have to pay our operators and, and, and additional expenses around overtime and, and technical investments. And, and so it's going to be uh, a challenge for um, the monitoring centers. I have confidence in all of them. They're, they're, talented, healthy, prudent businesses. Um, but this is, but, but I, I, I think that uh, from my standpoint, um, I, I think that our dealers are going to, um, that, that getting, getting to a footing to be able to deliver service to their customers um, is going to be a challenge. Okay. Is, is anybody uh, have a, have a, have a policy about uh, triaging phone calls, emergency essential calls? Are you, are you are you uh, uh, answering yes. signals in any different way at the moment? I would imagine not at this point. But 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 let's let's hear. Justin, you 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 have a big purse operation. What what are you doing? We do. So for us, we uh, just with the as we change our staffing and as we have staffing from home, we upstaffed a little bit during this period. I expect in the next week we won't need to be upstaffed again as everybody is working from home on the purse side. Um, we are able to monitor as normal. It's it's kind of surreal to look in the monitoring center and see it empty. I think anybody, any of us working that have that are, are seeing that. Um, but uh, we've got great people out that are taking the calls as they come in, just as if they were sitting at their their workstation in the office today. Well, there's a, there's a question here that came in. Uh, uh, for those of you that have operators working from home, uh, this dealer wants to know what precautions, if there needs to be, uh, 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 have been taken so that calls are continue to be confidential, that 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 customer information is isn't available. Uh, you know, this is even more well. It's important in the security, fire, PERS. I guess it would apply everywhere. Uh, uh, is there was that were you able? through technology to limit the operator's access to just ha handling a signal or or anyone know anything about that that's the question well well Ken this is Daniel I just want to jump in quickly which is there are no exaggeration millions of people um, doing work from home call center you know as as agents whether we're calling Delta Airlines or American Express, they're working from home and have been for years. So the concept that that monitoring centers are, you know, this is a well-worn path of being able to work with work at home agents who have confidential information um, and are supporting many of the businesses that we interact with every day. Okay, anyone else have a comment on that? I think that's a great point. And I think UL had some good guidelines, you know, as far as keeping that information you know, confidential, um, and uh, I think ultimately, you know, we trust our people. You know, just being sitting in the monitoring center, there are some provisions there that make you know it secure by nature. Um, but certainly, I think there are experiences where information has become unsecure, even in our monitoring centers. Uh, working from home is a matter of trust in our people, and like Daniel said, this is a this is a tried and true business model, and in many ways, the industry has been far behind in some of these things from a, due to the UL 827 requirements. And uh, I, I'm tickled that UL 
put some things out there this week, but it did for us it did not change our trajectory. Um, we've seen, if you look through the news, there are contact centers throughout the world that have been decimated because the COVID virus made it in by through one vector into their monitoring center and wiped out their entire workforce. And as we look at our risk vector, that's unacceptable to our dealers to to run that risk in our monitoring operations. And, and all of you, by the way, I know have uh, redundant sites. So even if one of your sites did get overwhelmed uh, with the virus, you would have another site that, uh, backup. Some of you have more than one backup. So you know, earl earlier I had mentioned how the uh, operator. Uh, terminals that we send them home with, um, ha there is no programs, there is no data that resides on those laptops. And we manage our VPN sessions uh, for our people. So if they're not working, they're not on the VPN, they're not in the system, and there is no data on the desktops or laptops that are out in the field. That, and having said that, you got to remember, we didn't go over to uh, the local uh, uh, unemployment office to find people to start working today. Uh, we're sending the people that have been monitoring uh, our customers' accounts for years. I mean, in USA, I think the average employee uh, time on the job is like 11 years or something. Uh, these aren't new people to us. If if we can't if we trust them in our office. You know, we certainly can trust them in their house, and we send them with the guidelines from UL saying, you know, you're you're supposed to work in a semi-private area of your home. So uh, yeah. UL has given us guidelines. You know, it, it forms a foundation yeah. for us, and and it's it's our regular people. You you call my office, you still get Donna or Felicia or who, you know Zig or whoever. It makes no difference. Change. Ken, Ken, can I make a suggestion? I, I, I know there are a lot of great questions coming in from dealers, but um, maybe if we could just go around the horn and, and each uh, presenter can share one or two tips of how their um, you know, suggestions to dealers on how they can go about um, pre preparing their company and being thoughtful in the next coming weeks and months and things that we've done. Maybe just okay. each person share one. You want to start? Sure. Um, um, so, uh, one of the things that, that we have identified is there are certain employees that must come in, right? And so we have, um, while the vast majority of our company is remote, all of our non-essential workers are remote, we've created two shifts. We created a team A and a team B, um, and we're doing one week on and one week off, um, to be able to allow for, um, to, to prevent any cross-contamination. So for those few essential workers, um, really on the leadership team that are coming in, we're, we're going to be doing a, ro a rotation. Um, so that's just one thing I'll share. I'll pass the mic. We can just keep going around. Well, I mean, something, something simple, if you're looking at what the dealers can do in their location, I mean, if they can work from home, they should work from home. If they can't um, and, and you believe your facility is, is virus free, the only way something's going to get in there is if somebody brings it in. So we're, uh, we're, checking temperature at the door with no touch th uh, thermometers we're asking people to go wash their hands immediately when they when they uh, come into the office we're asking them not to bring too too much personal stuff that's been in their car their home around to the walmart and and, and such uh just just bring what they need for work so we're trying to control what they're bringing in and trying to make sure as best we can that they're healthy and uh that they that they clean and, and sterilize themselves before they go to their workplace Justin, you want to comment? Yeah, I I think, you know, thinking from a dealer perspective, I think there's some unique challenges that they face that uh, perhaps we don't as monitoring centers where their technicians are, you know, going out into homes and businesses, and maybe they're not. Uh, these businesses, I know many of, and like us, have, there's a no visitation policy. No, Nobody from outside is coming into our facilities today. Um, you know, as I think of things dealers can do today, you know, uh, cash is king. You need to you need to stockpile cash. It's going to be needed in the coming weeks and months. I think this is going to go on for at least eight weeks. Um, I think you know we're either going to be China or we're going to be Italy, and uh, I'm guessing we're going to fall somewhere in the middle there. And I think I think for 
for our companies and to keep the industry healthy, we need to make sure we keep our team healthy and safe. Um, and again, keeping them working from home, keeping them um, out of harm's way, I think is the most critical thing we can do as businesses. And then again, look for ways to retain cash because cash is gonna be what all of our businesses need to survive through this challenge. Yeah, Bart, what do you have to say about this? Yeah, no, those are all great points. Uh, the one that I'll make is, is that I think this is a um, excellent opportunity for the learning curve on the alarm dealer side because what they have to do is to keep things going, they also have to understand that they have to keep us going as well. It was talked about earlier about cash flow. Um, you know, we're we're providing this labor, we're providing our services, we need to be, you know, continue to be fed as well. And I think what's gonna come out out of this is that alarm companies are gonna have to really look at um where their revenue sources come from and what the costs are for those revenue sources and have to adjust their business models uh, so that the different parts of the uh, business is going to be able to stand more on its own than just relying on the RMR uh, function to keep it going. Um, in, here in New York, they estimate that one third of all the restaurants are going to fail because so many of them operate on a shoestring already. So our dealers that are operating in that kind of shoestring mode that are so dependent on keeping their operation going because of the RMR have to understand that part of that it, you know, is required downstream to their uh, central station providers as well. Morgan, you have anything to add to this? Sure. I mean, I think this is a, a really good opportunity for alarm company operators to really start to pay attention to their bottom line. Uh, many of them, you know, operate in such a mode that um, if there's if there's cash in the bank, there's you know they're they're making money, and this is going to be one of those times in history, unprecedented times in history that that that's not going to be the case. And these guys are really going to have to pay attention to what they're spending, their labor costs are, what they're doing and how they're doing it, and start to on becoming more profitable and doing things that are profitable because maybe that they've been uh, laughing up for all these years is going to dry up here really quickly. It's, it's <laughs> a new not, day. It's a new era. I'm not, it's time I'm to, not sure time to think out of the box. Is. I'm not sure any of the dealers listening would 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 think that they've been lapping it up uh, so far. But 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 l let me say this because I don't want any of you to have to say it. Uh, monitoring is a unique uh, part of the alarm business, and and alarm I'm including all aspects of the alarm, including PERS, everything, fire, uh, commercial, residential. Uh, uh, even anything that that's that's being monitored, anything, environmental, anything. Dealers are are charging customers uh, uh, a rate, whatever it is. Let's call it forty bucks a month. And we know, and they know that a couple of those bucks, a small part of those bucks, is going to the central station. Who's actually doing the monitoring? So the dealer, once they set up. A, a, a monitoring uh, 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 account, they they send out a bill, monthly, quarterly, annually, and this, they collect the money, hopefully, and then they pay the central station who's doing all the work. Uh, uh, dealers that, that are thinking in their head, well, we, ha we have to service it, we have to, yes, you get paid for servicing it, not, not anymore for monitoring it. You're getting paid for your monitoring, and the central station is doing that aspect of the security service. So it, it, I, I don't know that any central station has taken the position. Uh, I, I don't know that I've ever taken the position that, this, that the dealers are, are bringing money in as trust funds that belong to the central station. Uh, that part, that part, that chunk, let, let's call it $5 out of the 40 uh, uh, should be going to the central station. And the dealer knows it. And and some dealers are going to be uh, in 
encouraged or 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 make bad decisions. Uh, look, uh, first of all, uh, so a lot of you know, I, I'm a United States bankruptcy trustee. So part of my practice, and I've been doing that as long as I've been representing the alarm industry. So part of my practice is that area. I can tell you that 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 we have uh, uh, just yesterday. I called my my bankruptcy staff in. We are going to be beefing up because we think there's. I think I know. Uh, all of you know. There's going to be a lot of debt, uh, a debtor creditor work, a lot of bankruptcy work. It's coming. It has to come. I sit across, I, I'm not going to take my camera and turn it, but I look out at Roosevelt Field Mall, which is one of the largest malls in the country. And as you may know, it's closed. It's closed. And there are some stores, one restaurant I'm looking at now went in not more than two months ago. I didn't think they were going to survive anyway, but now for sure they're not going to survive. And neither are a lot of the other outfits that are here. Look, the mall owner has to pay his mortgage. He has to, no, the taxes aren't going to be forgiven. I can assure you of that. The mortgage isn't going to be forgiven. I can assure you of that. Maybe he's got to pay his cleaning service. They want to get paid. And guess what? He has to pay his alarms company too, because they're, they're monitored. So, well, so, Ken, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to echo what uh, others have said on this line. It's in times like this that all alarm dealers, um, um, have to um, give thanks for the, the recurring revenue business model and the fact that there are many businesses unlike ours that um, there will be no work and no and no opportunity and those that have chosen this industry um, you know many pick it for the their passion for life safety or technology but also it's it's got a great business model um, and so not only do people need our services but the fact that um, you know, they need them even in tough times. And so, you know, all the conversations that I've had with dealers is they get it, that they, they get it that 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 our, we're here and all the monitoring centers are here and we have to pay our employees every week to monitor their customers to keep that RMR alive, to that, that they, they know the value of that recurring revenue and how, you know, paying their monitoring centers to make sure that they're there to preserve that recurring revenue well, um, I don't think it's lost on dealers. How? Let me just complete my thought that I had before. When when businesses run into uh, tight financial uh, situations, the first one of the first temptations is to stop paying withholding taxes for their for their employees. That's one of the first things they stop. The next thing is the health insurance, except for themselves, probably, uh, uh, and what I'm, what I, the point I was trying to make to dealers is not, not be careful not to fall into that line of thinking when it comes to the central station. That really needs to deliver, and this is self-serving, of course, to all of you on here, but that needs to be uh, uh, given priority in their consideration because their monitoring business depends on your monitoring business and they need to understand that so you're going to have dealers are going to be experiencing non-payment from their customers from the commercial side from the residential side and, and because everybody is going to be affected there everybody's income is going to be affected uh and and it's going to we're going to see the trickle down effect and and the cash flow situation is going to start to work its way back up it's going to hit the central stations too you fellows that are that are, that are running central stations are eventually going to feel a cash crunch just like everybody else does that that's that that's down below okay and and so that's something that that we we're going to need to deal with at some point and i'm just cautioning uh uh, uh look I don't have to call. It's just, it's as if I went to caution you central stations and I say, hey, you better keep paying your, your utility bill or or you're going to be out of business. OK, you need to keep paying it. Uh, you need to pay your operators if you want them to keep showing up. Uh, that That's also obvious. Um, so here's a question for staff that has to travel to the central station. If stopped by authorities, I don't know if I've seen that yet. Uh, 
how would they verify that they are essential? Or, or is anybody issuing some kind of, uh, uh, he's, one with, someone said a FEMA card or an agent card? Daniel, you're shaking your head. What are you doing? Well, we are. I feel like, Morgan, why don't you talk? You have, uh, let's get you some airtime. Sure. So in, in California, like, which is on 100% lockdown, on? Go ahead, in California, it's 100% lockdown right now. And um, so what our staff has is they have a letter from yeah. us and a copy of the federal and state um, orders that, that show that we are listed as as necessary employees, and they have their state licenses with them. So they have three documents with them that should be able to get them through uh, any kind of road closure or anything else like that. Uh, and we have the same setup for the staff in New York. They they don't New York doesn't require an individual license, so they have their photo ID. They have their uh, letter from us and a number to verify their employment, as well as the federal and state statutes that al that classify them as necessary employees. Has, so has far, it, nobody's been uh, hassled. Morgan, I didn't know that. Does has has any governmental agency actually classified uh, the security industry and which parts of the security industry as essential? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know who both, and which both. parts. Both state and federal have classified security workers, data center workers, communication infrastructure workers, IT workers, all those people that are part of uh, that security and, and infrastructure value chain have all been classified as necessary workers. Okay. Yeah, there was a there was a uh, uh, letter uh, disseminated by the trade associations. Um, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security Cyber Infrastructure uh, a, uh, Security Agency, and in there they identify um, uh, public health, welfare, uh, e essential infrastructure workers, government and business, um, uh, and uh, law enforcement, public safety, and first responders, and those people that support those uh those uh functions so uh there there's I'll, lots of references and i'll i'll read from the new york uh, the proclamation from uh, uh governor cuomo in new york specifically says vendors of essential services necessary to the maintain the safety of residences or businesses so there's a couple of different um categories in the proclamation but that is Pretty. That is the most direct. They also refer to telecommunication and other essential infrastructure. Someone just asked that: Can a source for that federal letter be given? I'll send, send it to you, and you can send it around. Join the association. <laughs> That's right, Morgan. You are correct. <laughs> oh, that was smart. Um, but thanks. I'm just going to throw out a couple of questions, you guys. That I'm getting. You guys can jump in if you want. Anyone? Do you foresee cutting? only high priority alarm monitoring or continue to call on low priority signals as well. Okay, anybody changing the way they monitor? No, uh, not we, yet. Not yet. Well, we've asked our, actually we've asked our dealers to look at that. It, 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 we are asking them to look at that often is that, you know, with, with now people walking around with cell phones and apps and different ways to get their signals, we ask them to review their lower priority signals uh, we, we did mention that to them again, if there was a way that, that, that they could redirect some of those signals uh, to the customer uh, rather than uh, send it to us, uh, that would be great. If they, if they can't, that's okay too, but we, we, we did ask them to uh, take a look at that. So, someone is saying that, that New Jersey uh, mentions security providers, but he didn't think Homeland Security or FEMA actually mentioned the security companies. I think that I'm reading that right. But I think we've established that that uh, uh, the industry has been has been uh, 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 classified as essential. So so that's resolved. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, other central stations have implemented trouble suppression compliance compliant with NFPA seventy two for dealers. I don't know. Is that? I don't think I'm getting a full question here. Other centers that have implemented trouble suppression compliant. What's trouble suppression compliant? Anyone know? 
Morgan, you should know that. Probably putting weight plays on trouble. Trouble goes into trouble status and then restores within a reasonable amount of time. The signal. You break, Morgan, you got to fix your audio. You're breaking up. Morgan, you got to fix your audio. You're breaking up. See if you can try that sounds again. Like, sounds like some companies are trying to do work avoidance. What does training of new hires look like if the situation gets worse than it is? Who wants to know about remote training. That's something we're working on right now is what does that look like? Um, we train small batches of classes. Um, it is in person and certainly once they are onboarded as well, there's a time to it's just different when you go out of the training room and into the monitoring center where I think all of us have great training programs in place and there's a lot of you know somebody's right by your side helping you through and able to answer your questions and my team's working on that right now what does that look like you know if we did need to train remotely and uh, and there's a lot of great technology and tools available where you can see their screen can hear their audio and it's like you're sitting next to them. And it's just a matter of getting those right technologies in play and adjusting our training programs to support, uh, to be in line with those technologies that are available. You, you know, I'd like to uh, uh, tell everyone that uh, I was forced to start using Skype because my office manager works remotely uh, for a couple of years now. And it, you have to get on Skype or one of the other programs uh, uh, this business of sitting here, I feel like uh, Justin's right sitting up across my desk, and so and and so the rest of you. This is this is is uh, as personal as I think it could get. It might actually, I think, work better than actually being here. You're 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 sort of paying more attention. You feel like you've got that camera on you, uh, other than Bart, who is uh, you know moving around a lot, but and and Morgan, who didn't show us his face. But um, uh, uh, I think everyone needs to start using it. I've been telling people to use it before this problem arose. Right, David? Isn't this better than yesterday? No one could see you. A little bit, a little bit better than yesterday. So, <laughs> so like Justin, we're we're uh, hired. We actually reached out to the local media to let them know that we're still hiring because we know that a lot of people are hurting and out of jobs. And the majority of the uh, the interview process takes place over the phone. Um, uh, because we, we, we have them do a voice test, how they sound on the phone, you know, because if we can't understand them, then neither can our customers and, and things like that. And then we're limiting our uh, classes to three people, uh, which in, in our training room allows us to separate them uh, far apart. But, but we've got, you know, the six locations that we could do, we could hire, uh, you know, three people and put them through training at a time at, at three, at six different locations. So that, that helps us a lot. All right. This next one shows the reach of the Kirschenbaum Forum, Bart. Can you enlighten us here in British Columbia if we are essential services as well, or who, who would we contact to find out? I don't know if anyone knows anything about Canada. I would, I, uh, my mom's from Canada, so I'll take that. Um, I think that uh, you would call your local province um, or look for guidance from the Canadian government um, to the extent that um, to the extent that these definitions are coming out, they're usually tied to decisions by the government to limit travel. So unless travel hasn't been limited in your province or your city, I don't think they're going to be focused on what the definition of essential worker is. So, okay. Uh, one, uh, Daniel, one, one, one thing. One thing I'll additional I'll add is we did the, did the same thing that Morgan at Rapid did, which is we gave each employee a letter. Um, with um, explaining their role and, the and, and what affiliated monitoring does and gave them a hotline, 24 hour hotline, in case they're stopped by anyone. Although we have not, there has been no evidence that, that we have gone there yet as a, as, a, as a country. But that might be a proactive measure that those in British Columbia could take. Um, we also applied an essential employee sticker to every uh, person's ID. So well, that I might be a proactive a, step. I just got a notice. Uh, uh, from our local paper, Governor Cuomo orders shutdown of all businesses statewide, except for essential services. You think my law yeah, is a service? I don't know. No, but I, I was I was just going to say that because my daughter. 
my do- my daughter's in uh, nursing management in one of the local hospitals, and I just got her text saying that about Cuomo. So, um, you know, and uh, you know, it, it's it's the inevitable. So, I'm not even sure uh, how that works for me. What what does that mean? We just don't show up on Monday. That's it. I guess we can talk about what it means for you. Work Ken. from home. Huh? Work from work home. from home. Okay. Uh, all you guys take note. Mike Riley, Michigan Alarm Association, would like someone to send the letter. I guess the letter uh, establishing uh, uh, essential services. M Riley at vigsec.com. Mike, I hope you hear from one of them. Uh, Mike should probably be a member of one of the associations. He is Michigan. He's, he's with the he, okay. He in the Long Association. Yeah, well, he's looking uh, for the letter. Uh, okay, let's see what else we got. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm happy to share. You know, a generic version of our letter. I'm sure anyone on the on the call would as well. Okay. All right. Do any of you guys want to uh, summarize uh, anything? I, I think we're going to need to get together again, and uh, uh, who knows? Maybe the electric's going to go off. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, this is Daniel. I'll offer just one thought. Um, we never could have imagined today, two two weeks ago, we could never have imagined where we were, t- where we are today. So the question that everyone needs to be asking themselves is, what should we be doing today for what we're going to be seeing in two weeks? Um, and that is how, that is the question every morning at our stand up, our team stand up, where we say, what should we be thinking about? for what we expect to see in the next week or two that we can start doing now to prepare ourselves. You got an answer for us? I I think for every business, (laughs) for every business, it's a different decision. I think that the reality is, is that we're going to confront um, colleagues, employees, customers who are going to um, get it, right? More and more people are going to um, contract it. And so we're going to have to confront what that means. Um, and then also cash flow challenges. Uh, Justin spoke to that. I think that inevitably we're going to have cash flow challenges. And so I think that if I could, I, I'm, I, I'm not going to be so bold as to give advice to others on how to manage their businesses, but to the extent that they take a long, hard look at, um, at their necessary expenses like um, versus their discretionary expenses and start being a little bit more proactive than I think they need to be. I think it's going to be a serious problem. And I don't know why it's only going to be for next week or for two weeks. I'm not so sure how long this is going to last. Uh, Cuomo's saying Cuomo's saying till the end of April. You know, he thinks it's going to be six weeks before it uh, peaks out. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> not that not that he's got a magic ball, but no, not that he's going to go hungry either, but or or miss a paycheck for that matter. But I'd uh, like to make two I'll, points Ken, if I could. Yeah. I, I, you know, as I've worked with my team, I think one key is communication. Uh, Utah had the, the added unfortunate uh, earthquake that happened yesterday or two days ago, I guess now as well. And uh, I think we have a lot of people who are have a lot of anxiety and a lot of concern over this. For most of us, we've never seen anything like this. And for my team, keeping in communication with them has been key in making sure my team is communicating with them, showing calmness collectiveness planning is is going to be really important for all of us as we lead our organizations through these tumultuous times i think there's a great quote uh, that i'd like to end with from abraham lincoln as he faced very tumultuous times during his presidency and he said the dogmas of the quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present the occasion is piled high with difficulty and we must rise with the occasion As our case is new, so we must think anew and act anew. We must disenthrall ourselves and we shall save our country. And I think that act that reflects the times we are in, I think it reflects the question Daniel recommended we ask every day is, you know, what does the next two weeks look like? Well, I must say, when I give my speech to my staff at the end of today, I'm going to end with not something quite as eloquent as that. It's going to be, Grab the toilet paper on your way out. Okay. Uh, 
Listen, let, 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 let's, let's also talk about, about one. I, I, I usually decide between Abraham Lincoln or Ken Kirschenbaum when it comes to my quotes. <laughs> Ask your staff which they would prefer at the end of today, okay? <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, not I don't Ken Kirschenbaum. <laughs> not my staff, I can tell you right now. They're, they're stripping this place clean. Um, look, we're, we're, we're all talking about now shutting down and or, or reducing workforce and the problem is is going to be continuing payroll or not uh what ideas or what we, i mean i don't want to i don't want to put any of you on a spot uh about it but that's something that i think everyone needs to be dealing with do we pay our employees uh and 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 uh for what or how or i mean I, i'm i'm struggling with that myself which is why i asked the question and dealers are going to be struggling with it. Look, they have to stop installation. You know, you know, dealers are not going to be able to install systems. Why? Well, first of all, commercial places are closed. So that's the end of that. Secondly, residential jobs. People that are out of work aren't putting alarm systems in for the most part. They're not looking to spend more money at, at, at the moment. So that's going to be a, pro a trickle down problem. The next one is people don't want workers in their home they don't want to take the chance of letting them in so that's a problem okay alarm alarm dealers are should probably communicate as best they can with their uh, uh customers unfortunately most alarm systems that are out there today are not repairable remotely there are some that are uh, but but mo I would have to say the lion's share most of of, of uh, you guys would know better than me. Uh, uh, they the, the dealer can't reach into the home uh, remotely and and fix a problem. Uh, 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 um, I just had that happen with me. Uh, my alarm company was able to turn a surge protector on for my TV, uh, 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 which had somehow popped or whatever it's called. But but. Uh, there's going to be big, big changes coming. That's for sure. Okay. Anyone want to wrap up and uh, summarize? I think, anyone? Well, I Anything just following do? up on Mark, just Mark, following up on that. Yeah. I think I think what um, the alarm companies need to understand is that the government, and while I'm not a fan of government, uh, government is there as the safety net, and this is why they've passed rules and laws saying that if you if you lay people off they can immediately go on unemployment and start to collect from day one is that you active know, in new york yet Bart? yes oh i didn't know that. so so um you know you, you the our customers cannot carry the full burden by themselves and you know governments governments there and this is a perfect time when you know you can say government has a role to play and um you know there's there's no shame in in laying people off all the school all the school teachers are laid off every everybody's out so and now in new york it's only going to get worse yeah what's doing in utah justin you know there we haven't we're a few weeks behind i think all you coastal residents and uh you know we're Everybody's trying to figure out how to work from home for these other, you know, all the other industries. Um, I think there's tough decisions to be made. I'm, my hope is that in the alarm monitoring space, I don't have to lay anybody off because alarms still need to be monitored. But uh, as the dealers who are on this call with technicians, I think you made a great point and a great points have been made. If you can't keep them busy and cash is king, uh, there's certainly some hard decisions to be made. How can you employ your team in being constructive and productive during these times and match the revenue that you're bringing in? You, you know what's really crazy in my mind? Okay, don't come to work. Okay, so where are we going to go? To the supermarket. That's where everybody's going. Uh, you know, everyone's going there and then they're going back home. So I, I'm not sure what we've accomplished by... by uh, uh, by what we're doing. Although I guess some some places are more densely populated than others. David, what part of the country are you in? I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee right now. Okay, Any, anything doing down there? 
Uh, no, there's more cases than I would have been uh, expected in, in this state, but uh, no, it's uh, I work from home and don't get out much, so I couldn't tell you what's normal. Oh. So, how, but, about, uh, how, about, how about you, Morgan? You're up in the sticks up in Syracuse, aren't you? No, I'm working from home out of uh, Knoxville, Tennessee as well. Oh, well, you could maybe go, go shopping with David. <laughs> Daniel, you're in Manhattan <laughs> taking the subway? I am in uh, right now. I am in Affiliated Monitoring Center in New Jersey. Yeah, but you live. Don't you live in Manhattan? I do. Oh. I am not taking the subway. All right. I won't mention your limousine. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll do something. <laughs> if only. <laughs> you know, so, if only. Ken, some something that I'd offer is in some parting device, uh, advice is uh, you know Daniel said it's like it, it's in our DNA for all of us to have emergency plans and things like that. And, and though I'm not sure any of us really uh, fully anticipated something like this, uh, we have back, we have plans that we work. With. Not only do we have plans, we work the plans. Everybody's aware of the plans. We practice the plans. Uh, we refresh supplies. I, I'm sure of it, that that we all do that. Uh, I would encourage dealers in this downtime just to start documenting some of the things that they're going through so so they're prepared if and when something like this happens. So they're not reacting to situations, you know, running around trying to find toilet paper and, and, and ammunition, but, uh, yeah. but uh, you know, preparing for stuff like that ahead of time. So, so uh, they're a little better off if something like this happens again. It's true. The gun stores, by the way, in New York, right. lines around the block. That, that's what's going on. That's what's going on. And, uh, uh, you know, the funny thing is supplies are actually still available. Uh, uh, the, somehow the supply chain is continuing. You, there, there will be toilet paper. There will be eggs. There will be milk. There will be uh, uh, chicken and meat. That, 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 that's all coming. But people are all getting crazy in, in, in the supermarkets and, and cleaning things out right away. And, and uh, you know, where it goes from there, I don't know. I'm, you know, I mentioned The Walking Dead. You got to watch that show or some of these other uh, uh, movies that came out about these, these uh, 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 issues that, that uh, are pretty scary. Pretty scary. It, it, yeah. Um, this is Daniel. And, and I, I just want to echo, I really love the quote that Justin shared. And I think that um, it's just a reminder that we're very fortunate to live in a great country. Um, except for the gentleman in British Columbia, Canada is also a great country. But the um, we um, have faced uh, challenges like this in the past. Our our ancestors, our our grandparents, our forefathers uh, have have faced challenges like this. And what's amazing about um, people and Americans is that we adapt. And I think what's been extraordinary for me is to see how. Um, our team has stepped up and evolved and just people in their lives have, have adapted just in the last week. I mean, um, think about what we were doing last Friday and two Fridays ago to today. And so, Ken, you know, my answer to you is, is I have confidence in Americans and I have confidence um, in humans to continue to adapt. Um, we, will, we will survive this. Um, and if I can just put my one public service announcement is, um, you know, the, the 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 social distancing and the quarantine is real and so to the extent that you know you're not going to work the reason you're not going to work is to stay home and the best thing we can all do is rather than think about catching it from someone else we have to be thoughtful about the fact that we may have it and so what what can we do to keep ourselves away from anyone else um and and i think as we do that in the in the weeks and months ahead um you know, through um, our collective good efforts, we will we will get through this. Okay, guys, we'll see if we can organize. Uh, uh, I need I need Eileen over here to uh, help me do these webinars. So if we can do them remote remotely together, we'll try putting them together again, and 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 we'll reach out to you and and probably revisit this in a week or two and see where we're at. Maybe we'll all be singing a different song pretty soon, right? Thank God, thank God for Eileen. You'd, okay. be, you'd be lost without her oh my god and you'd be lost without me so anyway <laughs> uh, i want to thank you all for participating and uh if any of you want to like do a webinar let me know i think everyone's going to be home looking for something to do so we'll be happy to happy to put it together for you
So just let us know and uh, uh, talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks. Thank okay, you. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, everybody. Okay, bye.